Welcome to the Laser Show Designer 2000 tutorial. This tutorial covers Pangolin's program for creating and editing laser frames and animations. A separate program, Showtime 2000, is then used to add music and effects to the frames and animations to make a complete laser show. Laser Show Designer 2000 gives you many different ways to create and edit your frames. It works somewhat like drawing or CAD type graphics programs. If you've used these before, you'll find similar tools and capabilities. For this tutorial, you'll be creating a simple set of laser frames using a variety of the tools available in Laser Show Designer 2000. Begin by selecting Laser Show Designer 2000 from the Start menu. Once LD2000 has loaded, you'll see two windows. Up here is the control window. This displays frame information and allows manipulation of the currently displayed frame. Second is the drawing window. This is where frames are drawn and edited by using the various drawing tools that are located on the left side of the window. Let's move this out of the way and we'll take a brief tour of the control window. At the top is the frame section where you choose which frame or which block of frames you want to work on. Depending on your memory, you can have thousands of frames available to you. Below this is the points section. As you probably know, laser frames are traced like a connect the points drawing. A typical frame will have around 300 to 1000 points. In the points section, you can see and edit individual points or groups of points. Below the points section is the coordinates section. This shows the location and color of the currently selected point, the one you're working on, and of the mouse, where the mouse is in the drawing window, and what color you're drawing with. The lower left is the tracks area, where you can show multiple frames at once. Just like audio multi-tracking, you can visually multi-track by overlapping frames. This can be a great help when you're drawing different frames that all have to line up with one another. The section with the four squares is the view section. This lets you see your frame from the front, top, side, and 3D view. There's also a handy auto-rotate button, which rotates your frame in 3D so you can see it from all sides. Now, let's take a brief tour of the drawing window. The top left is the color wheel, where you select the color you want to draw with. Underneath are the tools for drawing and editing your frame. If you use, move the mouse cursor over a tool button, it will display the name of the tool. Here we have the polygon tool. Also, when you use a tool, you get some helpful information which appears at the right of the color wheel. For example, on the rectangle tool, it shows us with the left mouse button we can draw a rectangle, and with the right mouse button we can draw a square. At the bottom left are the three view buttons for making a new frame, for undoing, and for redrawing or refreshing the drawing screen. And finally, the large area on the right is, of course, the drawing area, where you'll do much of your frame creation and editing. Now that we've had a brief tour, let's begin by drawing a simple frame. Click on the Stream Close tool, the third one in the top row. Then choose a color by clicking on one of the colors displayed in the color wheel. Let's pick green. We'll click on the green square. You notice that this square also turns green to tell us that's our selected drawing color. When you're ready to create a frame, simply click and hold in the drawing area and write out the letters L, D. On some projectors, you may notice a pulling effect between the start and the end of the two letters. To correct for this, we'll use an effect called Eliminate Blanking Jumps. On the control window, click the button that looks like a Z with a, with a dotted diagonal. As the button shows, extra black or blanked points are added where the laser jumps from one line to another. This slows down the laser trace and helps to eliminate the pulling effect. Well, that's our frame. Let's save it and then go create a new frame. Right now, you just wrote into frame one. That's because LD2000 is set to go to the first frame when it starts. To create another frame without overwriting the current frame, click on the Next Frame button. This is the large gray right arrow button located at the top left of the control window. We're now on frame two. We can create a second frame while keeping frame one in memory. LD2000 allows the easy creation of various basic shapes by using the shape tools. The first shape tool is the line tool. This tool allows you to create straight lines. 
We'll click on the line tool and we'll select the color red. Note that there's a description of the line tool here. It says left, draw a line at any angle. Right, draw only horizontal or vertical lines. To create a straight horizontal line, we'll right click and we'll draw from left to right. We have a straight line. The next shape tool we'll look at is the rectangle tool. The rectangle tool allows you to create rectangle and square shapes. We'll select the color green for this. To create a rectangle, we'll do a left click and drag a rectangle shape in the drawing area. The next shape tool is the ellipse tool. This tool allows you to create an ellipse with the left mouse button or circle shapes with the right mouse button. We use a blue color and draw with the left mouse button an ellipse. The last shape tool we'll look at is the polygon shape tool. This tool allows you to create irregular shapes that have straight lines or edges. Click on the polygon tool. We'll select the white color. To create a trapezoid shape, we'll left click and release for each segment of the trapezoid that we want to draw. To clean up any pulling lines, we'll use the Eliminate Blanking Jumps button. Again, up here in the control window. If you make a mistake while drawing, simply click on the undo button with the backward spacing arrow. There's an undo button here. And there's also one conveniently up here in the control window. You can use either one. Each time you click on it, it goes back a step. There are six total steps, so you can go back to do the last six things that you created. Okay, let's leave this random shapes frame, frame two, and we'll move to frame three where we'll type in some text. Again, we go to next frame. We're now on frame three. Creating text messages is easily accomplished by using the text tool. We'll select the text tool, just click in the drawing area where you want text, and type it in. Let's say you don't like this particular typeface or size. To change the text, do a right click on the text tool. This brings up the text settings window. Within this window, you can set various parameters and preview your text. First, highlight the words pangolin laser in the text dialog box. Then type the words, say, new laser, and hit enter. We now see the words new laser in the currently selected font. You can pick different fonts. For example, here we have true type fonts, such as Times Roman, that are built into the computer, or Arial. You can also pick laser fonts. These have been specially designed for laser. This one is called Architect. Gives you a handwritten look. This is a stick font. It's basically the simplest font available for laser. There are other controls where you can set the height and the width. You can set letter spacing. You can set the point density. When you're happy with this, click on OK, and your text is now in the text window. We can go to a new frame, just clear out this frame, and type any other text that we might want. So now that we've selected our text, anywhere we type in here, our text will appear. Manipulating text is a good way to illustrate the capabilities of some of the frame editing tools that are available in the drawing window. To rotate a frame to a desired angle, you simply click on the Rotate tool and use the left mouse button to click and drag in the drawing area to rotate a frame to your desired angle. Note that the axis of rotation is the point at which you clicked in the drawing area. Here we're clicking further outside. To resize a frame, you click on the Resize tool and use the left mouse button to click and drag in the drawing area. If you go more vertically or more horizontally, it'll be resized according to where the mouse is. If you use the right mouse button, everything will be resized up or down at equally. You can move a frame by clicking the Move tool. 
use the left mouse button to move it exactly where you want it. You can flip a frame on a horizontal axis by clicking the flip tool and using the left mouse button to click in the drawing area at the desired axis location. You can also flop a frame on the vertical axis by clicking on the flop tool and using the left mouse button to click again at the desired axis location. To separate parts of a frame or to duplicate items within a frame, use the cut tool. We'll select cut and use the left mouse button to draw a box around the area that we want to cut. We now have grabbed or picked up this area. We can put it wherever we want. Once we put it down by clicking with the left mouse button, we now have an another copy. We can also put that down, and we can continue putting down copies as many as we want. When we're finished, use the right mouse button. Here, we now have the words laser laser show using our cut tool. Recoloring a frame can be accomplished quickly by clicking the transform menu item in the drawing window, going down to recolor frame, and using one of the three options. We can recolor it with the current drawing color. We can use rainbow group by group, which makes each group, or in this case each letter, a different color. Or we can recolor the frame with rainbow point by point. Every point is a different color. It's a beautiful effect and instantly available with Laser Show Designer. Let's click on the next frame button to go to frame four. LD2000's drawing area has a grid pattern on it that can help you create orderly frames. We'll turn on the snap to grid function using this button here in the control window so that now the mouse will only draw where the grid points are. The grid snap is best illustrated by creating a pattern of concentric shapes. We'll click on the rectangle tool and use the left mouse button to draw a series of concentric rectangles. There's one. The snap function can also help with using multiple colors within a frame. We'll click on the paint roller tool and select the color red. We use the left mouse button to click and drag a vertical rectangle selection area, starting in the upper left corner and ending one or two grid lines over. We'll pick our next color, yellow, next color, green, and as you can see, we're going to be coloring or recoloring parts of this frame. There's cyan, and we'll finish off with a darker blue. These concentric rectangles now have a spectrum color effect on them. To finalize the spectrum look, we can use a color smoothing effect to blend the colors together instead of having the sharp separating lines that you see here. Click on the special effect menu item, SFX, in the control window and highlight the smooth colors menu. You see you have subtle, moderate, and heavy. We'll choose heavy. And you can now see how the colors blend very nicely red blending into yellow, into green, into cyan, and finally into blue. The hard edges of the color spectrum are replaced by the smooth blending. The concentric rectangles can also illustrate some transformation effects available in LD2000. These effects are located in the transform menu item of the drawing window. Click on transform, go down to wrap onto sphere, etc., and see different shapes we can wrap onto. We'll pick the second one, hemisphere. The concentric rectangles are now wrapped onto a hemispheric shape. To better visualize this 3D hemisphere effect, we'll click on the 3D view button in the control window and the auto rotate button. On the laser, you can now see the hemisphere rotating in three dimensions. We can try other transform effects. We'll undo this first, going back to our flat one, and we'll wrap it onto a cylinder wrap it onto a cone, undo it, and even wrap it into a black hole. As you can see, LD2000 can be used to quickly and easily create three-dimensional frames. Another way to demonstrate this is to create a 3D brick wall. We'll go back to the front view. We'll go to frame five a new frame, 
to create our wall. We'll click on the rectangle tool and select the white drawing color. Starting in the upper left corner of the drawing, we use the left mouse button and draw a brick. We'll now use the cut tool to draw a square around that. We have cut it and picked it up. We'll put it back down again. And now we have made three bricks. These are still flat, but now we'll go turn it into 3D. To do this, we'll click the special effect menu item on the control window and go down to mark anchor points. This marks the corners of each of the rectangles. LD will remember the corners and we'll use that in our next step. You can actually see it's marked the corners here along the point slider. The final step is to click on the special effect menu and select extrude. We can pick how deep we want these bricks to be. Let's not make them too deep. We'll click on OK. Look at it in 3D and auto rotate it. And you can see that we do have a 3D brick wall. There's a little tiny bit of pulling, so we'll use eliminate blanking jumps, which will make that perfectly straight. Creation of custom frames or logos can be easily accomplished by using a function called auto tracing. Auto tracing allows you to trace a picture file to create laser frames. To do this, we'll turn off auto rotate, we'll go to the front view, and we'll click on the next frame button to go to frame 6. We'll also turn off the grid button so that we're no longer snapping to a grid. To auto trace, we'll first go to the view menu of the drawing window and go down to trace graphic file and select the only uh, option there, open background picture. This brings up a browser window where we can navigate and select a picture to load. We'll click on this SeaWorld picture here found in the LD bitmaps directory. You get a preview of what it looks like on the right side. We we'll click open and the SeaWorld logo is now in the drawing window. Well, we could trace over it by hand using, for example, the stream close tool. But as you can imagine, this might be a bit tedious and we can let the computer do it better and faster. I'll clear this. And you notice that when we loaded in the picture, a new button appeared, Auto Trace, located next to the Text tool. We use the left mouse button to click on the Auto Trace tool. This brings up the Auto Trace dialog box with different controls for it. What happens in Auto Tracing is that as you come into the drawing window, the cursor is pointing towards where it's going to look for the object. You click once, it traces around the edges of it, finds the object. To click this uh, cyan shape, we'll click once, and to click the darker blue shape, we'll click here, and again it auto traces it. To get the inside of the killer whale, we click on the three patches, the three white patches on the inside, and that fast, we've recreated the SeaWorld logo. You can try different settings, different directions of tracing, but this has worked out pretty well, so we'll say OK. Now to view the frame without the background picture, We'll go back up to the View menu, go to Trace Graphic File, and click on Delete. This isn't deleting our frame, it's just deleting the background picture. Another way to get pictures into Laser Show Designer is not to do outlines like this, but to do TV-like raster pictures. Raster images are images where the laser uses colored points along parallel or spiral lines to create a laser frame. We'll click on the Next Frame button to go to frame 7 and give us a new frame. Next, we'll click on the special effect menu item, SFX, and choose Make Raster Frame. This brings up the Raster Master dialog box. First, we need a source bitmap, a picture that will turn into our laser bitmap. So we click on Open, and we'll use LD Model, this picture of this woman. Click on Open, and the Raster Master now expands. We have a source bitmap, Next, we need to put a raster pattern on it. There's a number of different patterns available to us. I'll click on Show Output on Laser down here so you can see it. And this one gives us a very nice density. 
There are controls in the raster master for controlling the size of the raster image. Right now, we're taking the raster and shrinking it down while leaving the bitmap so that we can focus in on different parts. We can move that around. Let's say we want only her eyes and her lips. And when we're satisfied with the raster, we click on OK. And that now becomes our laser frame. It's a series of horizontal lines, each line colored just right to create a photorealistic picture. Finally, LD2000 offers a powerful digital abstract creation tool. Simple and complex abstract patterns can be created and displayed exactly the same every time. To see this, we'll click on the next frame button to go to frame 8. To access the abstract generator, click on the abstract generator button located here in the control window. This brings up the abstract generator window. There are three oscillator banks here, here, and here, plus color cycling controls and a preview window. When the abstract generator comes up, it gives us a circle. It's 30 hertz and 50% in size. Let's take a look at how this works very quickly. We'll increase the size to 100% in oscillator bank one. And in oscillator bank two, we'll change the Y oscillation speed to say 414 or so. Right now, you don't see anything happen because we, while we've changed the speed, we haven't changed the size. So let's change the size. We're actually increasing the amount of this that's added in there. As we go to 100%, we now have a mix between the oscillators in one and two. We can change the shape of the waveforms. Let's change the waveform in oscillator bank two to a triangle wave. Click on OK. You can now see it has a sharper look to it. We can add colors to it too. We'll go to the color cycling section down at the bottom, and our sequence right now is all white. We click on it, see different preset sequences. We'll choose rainbow, click on OK, and now we have a beautiful rainbow colored abstract. We can play with it more by changing other frequencies. This is an excellent way to learn how the abstract generator works. Simply try out different settings, different color cyclings. There are also some abstracts loaded into Laser Show Designer, and you can load those in and see what those look like. There are many other aspects to creating and manipulating frames within LD2000. LD2000 is the most powerful and professional laser frame creation software available. With LD2000, you can create just about any type of laser graphic. If you want to learn more about it, there are many resources available for you, including help files, tip of the day, and the Pangolin forums, available at www.pangolin.com. Having fun experimenting is also one of the best approaches to learning the various tools and becoming familiar with the power of LD2000.